Run, river, run, run through the hills. Run, river, run to the sea. Run, river, run to your place beneath the sun. Run, river, run. Welcome to my guest today. We have again. We have. We're delighted to have Thomas D'Agostino, and he is a paranormal researcher, investigator, and an author. Welcome back, Tom. Oh, thank you, thank you. He is featured <laughs> in, uh, you're, you've got your article, Tales from Beyond, in the Blackstone Valley Express, and you're also in the Yankee Express, and maybe is it the Upton Mendentown Choir, something like that, right? Yeah, there's a few of them that are part of the same company. Bellingham, probably the Bellingham yeah, paper, too. Yeah, Bellingham. This is so good. T- Tales from Beyond. And... <laughs> we got thoughts to talk about. First, you've got a book coming out. Now, what's that going to be? The book is Ghost of the Blackstone Valley, and that is going to be coming out in September. Yeah. And it uh, covers all these really nice places you can actually visit in the Blackstone Valley that are haunted. That are ha- now, you've been to all of them, obviously. Yes, yes, we've been to all what's of them. What's your favorite place to go to talk with, to get to get with the spirits? What's your favorite place? Uh, within the Blackstone Valley or not in? in well, the, within the Blackstone Valley. Within the Blackstone Valley. We loved, Nine Men's Misery is really great, the Cumberland Monastery. Where's that? It's right in Cumberland. It's an old monastery. And uh, the monastery started around 1902. Mm-hmm. They moved after a fire in 1950 to Spencer, Mass. Yeah. And the monastery became a library, and there's a ghost of a monks that uh, actually close books and move books and things like that. Mm-hmm. And they, you can hear them like throughout the building, because most of the building is still there, even though the library was built off of it. Yeah. And then if you go into the woods, uh, there's some trails, and there is a monument to nine men who were slain during King Philip's War. And it's the oldest war monument, I suppose, in the United States. <coughs> and there they hear the crying, the screaming of the battle. It was my, uh, battle Michael Pierce, okay. uh, Captain Pierce's fight. And, uh, you know, they see the ghost of a rider, horse and rider, all of a sudden appears, and a little girl. So it's a pretty active place. <laughs> and so that's going to be part of your book. That is going to be in What's the book. What's the name of your book again? Could it come up? Ghosts of the Blackstone ghost Valley. Of the, you've got quite a few books that you've written. I mean, how many? This is you? number 12, actually. 12. Just 12? <laughs> yeah. So that will be out in September, so we'll have you back on again, and we're going to we'll show, actually show you the book. I heard, I was listening to a WBZ has talk stay, uh, shows at night, and um, I happen to have Dan Ray on. <laughs> I'm like, is that Tom D'Agostino that I know, the, the uh, paranormal investigator? And it was. Yeah. I was amazed, and I yeah. thought, yes. <laughs> yeah, like I said, you should get on the show right after. Well, up you have Morgan, that he'd be great. Yeah. And then uh, Bradley J, he's out there. He's good, too. So I think I, that is amazing. Yeah, he, um, we've been on it twice. I was on it uh, in August and in October, okay. especially for Halloween, like a few days before Halloween. And a lot of people were calling in, you know, and it was very enjoyable to, to chat with the people and, mm-hmm. and hear their, you know, stories and, and share the experiences. So it was great. Good for Dan. Dan. That too. Is, yeah, he that's loves really it. good, too. Now, <laughs> I had read, it was in the January issue of, in 2018 here, Tales from Beyond, that's his, his, uh, his entry. So you bought a Haunted Hoss Part 2. Now fill people in who don't even know Part 1. What happened? Well, um, Aline and I were looking for a place, and uh, we decided on Putnam, Connecticut, because it's a beautiful little town. Yeah. It's like that perfect New England small town. Yeah. And we were going to build a log cabin, and so we got a realtor, and she started showing us pieces of land and log cabins. She said, but i got to show you one more house. It's my stepfather's home, and uh, it's a Victorian home. And we said, well, let's go. We can get ideas, yeah. you know, see what we can. We walked in there like, whoa, we're home. You knew. Right off the bat. It's Second a real Victorian. In, How old is it? Boom. It's uh, about 117 years old now, 118 oh. years old. God. And we were like, this is incredible. So we uh, ended up purchasing it. We did end up buying it, and it, all things pointed to us getting There was no way we were not going to get it for some reason. It's just like in the cars. And as we, they gave us the keys, they said, you can go in, you know, look around, clean up a little, do what you want to do. And as we get to know the people in the neighborhood, not really get to know them, they started coming out and saying, hey, oh. so did you hear anything yet? Or yeah. did you see anything yet? And we're thinking... <laughs> Was this like a bad neighborhood? You know, <laughs> and they, we didn't. We had no clue. They meant the house. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
And oh, let's see. Oh, yeah, they probably thought, did the guy with the knife come out and get yeah, you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, oh my, what, are we going to get gunshots or anything? But it's a really beautiful, nice little neighborhood. How many rooms in the house? Um, I'm not sure. Let me think. <laughs> there's there's one, two, three, five upstairs okay. plus the bathroom, and there's four or five downstairs. There's a pantry, the dining room, the living room, the study, the kitchen. What are you guys doing with all that space? Oh, we filled it quickly. Okay. <laughs> when, <laughs> okay when we cool. first walked in, you could hear our voices echo through the yeah. rooms. Now it's like we got to get rid of some stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so we filled it quickly. But as we're as we're starting to move in, or just to get things going, people are coming and telling us stories of how you know one of the former owners is seen on the balcony outside the bedroom, yeah. and we're, while we're moving in, things started happening. I mean, like light one light in the far far bedroom went on right in the afternoon. We yeah. were all just walking up the stairs and I'm thinking, well, it could be the wiring. Mm -hmm. And I go in there and there's a switch you got to turn for the light, but then they had put another switch yeah. in. And both were on, so I switched <laughs> them both off and they went on again. It just went on. So in time... Hmm? It went on. Just yeah, went on. yeah. So it right in front of us. <clears throat> so in time, things like this started happening. We'd hear voices, we'd hear banging around, we'd hear noises. And we lived in a, a rural area to begin with, so it was, we knew what quiet was. It wasn't like we came yeah. from the city and all of a sudden hearing these strange noises. Yeah, yeah. And people just started coming in and, and writing us letters and telling us. We were on the local radio station about it. I used to live there and this happened. We lived here and this happened. We lived there. We did research and we found out that it was a, a convalescent home for people who were very mentally ill. That's where mm -hmm. they'd go. So the realtor never told you all this? No, I don't even know if he knew. I'm sure he did. He oh. did know it was haunted. And when we said, is the house haunted, right at the closing? He's going to say no. The dozen people, they can't, they have to divulge, if you ask. If you don't ask, they don't have to say anything. But by law, if you ask, dozen people at that table all went quiet. Uh -huh. And the guy Red said, flag. well, there are stories. And we both went, Yeah! And you it was another that. 30 seconds of silence as they all stared at us. <laughs> well, yeah, because to most people would say, oh, well, I guess we're not going to go there. But you were, you were, and your wife were like, oh, we're going there. Oh, this yeah, yeah. And things like, I mean, we've, we've recorded, actually, and cataloged over 100 and something instances in the last 10 years. We've even stopped. Every so often something really big happens. So it was 10 years ago? Yeah. I thought it was fairly recently. No, we've been, we've been there 10 years now. And it's been, we've only started to write about it recently because it's like, wow, this stuff, it wasn't just a fluke of, okay, we moved into a new house. It's, this is like, we saw full-blown apparitions. Our dog chased one of the apparitions sure. across the parlor. Uh, people, our neighbors have come and knocked on the door. One neighbor knocked on the back door one day while I was out running, and he saw a man and a child walking across the kitchen. And he knows that, you know, it's just Arlene and I living in the house. Yeah. When we first moved in, um, a woman's voice called Arlene's daughter by name. Now nobody, absolutely nobody knew her at all, yeah. much less that she was coming stay and she lives in Maine. She came down to stay the weekend. Yeah. And they thought it was me. Yeah. And all and I was upstairs. I heard them screaming. I'm like, whoa, I'm way upstairs the other side of the house. <laughs> yeah. I've walked in and I've seen like just you know you walk past you think it's Arlene and I'll just walk past and I'll be talking and all of a sudden I'll hear like the hair dryer go on upstairs or you know her start or her come down the stairs like I just saw you in the kitchen <laughs> and she wasn't in the kitchen <laughs> yeah and the same thing she'd see with me how about in the at chair. nighttime do you guys see like uh, is it more active do your spirits in your house are they more active at night or in the day it doesn't matter around eleven ish in the morning yeah. It's very active for a few hours, mm -hmm. and then at night, later, like around 10 or 11 at night. Then they start up again. Then you hear things, right. One night we had something, just we just shut off the lights, and we something at the foot of our bed just screamed at us. Literally, yeah. just... Yeah, like, what are you doing here? Just like that. We both jumped up, our dog jumped up, we turned on the light, he was running around whimpering. Yeah, it was like, wow. That's enough to shoot you out of bed. <laughs> Mm, yeah, because we hadn't fallen asleep. We just turned off the light. You just turned it 10, 30 seconds later. That you know? was it. We're talking with Tom D uh, D'Agostino, and he's a paranormal researcher and investigator, author, book coming up in September. This is the 12th book, right? Yes. How long have you been working on this one? Actually, it was a, 
a long time because what it is, we've been gathering stuff yeah. and we'd go on an investigation here and then finally I said, wow, we've got, you know, I want to do a book on a whole area and we're looking at this going down. I'm going, this is Blackstone Valley. We have so much stuff we've done. In Spencer, we did investigations of Granville's Pub, you know, things like this and they're not in any books and here they are just cataloged and so yeah, we've got to put it, we might as well put this one together. So it was a few years you know, until we signed the contract, then I just went boom and wrote it all into one book. <laughs> uh, Tom, people, you know, people get in touch with you somehow to say, would you come? Yeah. How do they reach you? They can reach me at tomdagostino.com, that's T-O-M-D-A-G-O-S-T-I-N-O.com, mm -hmm. or they can email at ramtail1822 at gmail.com. R A M T A I L, not T A L A, ram tail. Right, ram tail, like the tail of a ram from no, a No, ram, factory. by any chance, are you an Aries? <laughs> no, it's, um, it's, uh, the, it's based on the Rhode Island's officially haunted site. Okay. Rhode Island has an officially haunted site, and it's an old factory because they used to weave cloth. Yeah. Uh, they call it Ram Tail for like, a, you know, colloquial. And uh, <clears throat> I wrote a book on that one too. That one uh, is the only book we have that Arlene and I have done on one place alone. Cool. It's the history of the Ram Tail Factory because it's haunted by several people. The remains, it was a village mm -hmm. and a factory. And uh, it uh, is still haunted, of course. People, lots of people go there. And it is in the 1885 state census mm -hmm. as being stated as haunted. When you go in somewhere to investigate, now there's that show Paranormal Lockdown where they're there for 72 hours. Do you, how long do you spend in someone's home? Um, or wherever? It depends until they run, run out of food. Oh. No. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, we, we usually go, we don't like to spend too long because we have found out, I've been doing this now for 35 years, so. Wait a minute, what were you, 10 when you started? <laughs> Four, no. Okay. <laughs> um, and we ha doing that for so long, you're massing like about 1,200 more investigations. We found that when you first enter a place, yeah. whatever the energy is, it's very interested in you. Yeah. It's, it, you know, like like a, someone's pet, you know, they yeah. come to you, oh, and then they get bored and they go away. Yeah. Then a couple of hours later, they may go, oh, I'm bored now, and I'm going to go back and bother them. Do you find they touch you or they just surround you? They can do either or. Energy is, you know, we're not sure. It, you never know until it happens. Do you bring like a geo box and some of the other things there? No. Um, we have found... Um, we're there about four hours, you know, maybe a little longer if we stay the night, like if it's a hotel or something. Yeah. You know, but a, a no, person's place, three hours, four hours is more than sufficient. And we go more old school because we have found that with cell phones and channel selectors, you can make those things go off. Somebody yeah. had some thing that looked like a Simon Says or an investigation yeah. once, yeah. and they were making it. I I actually caught them. They had a they had a cell phone here, and they were hitting the cell phone, and they were making it light up. So I said, can you put that over the other side of the room and turn your cell phone off? And there it didn't go. work after that. I see that a lot on some of these uh, ghost yeah. hunter shows. They've got the Geoport, Geo whatever it is. Yeah. There's one that fascinates me, though, where it's it's got a line of lights, and then Nick stays overnight, and he just leaves it there. But then it it seems to light up a little bit. They leave the camera on him. He's yeah. sound asleep. It's like a K2 meter thing, but you don't know what's going on off camera. Yeah, yeah I know. And... and uh, in, meters like that are also EMF so if I turn a microwave on and I have that thing somewhere in the kitchen it's going to go off a little bit because microwaves are very powerful they they you know emit very powerful EMF signals electromagnetic or um, <coughs> fields which is a electronic field running this way and a magnetic field running with it at a 90 degree angle yeah. and basically what we use is we do use recorders, mm -hmm. video, and audio. We use tarot cards because it's some, one of the oldest forms of communication and divination known. So any energy or spirit, you know, if they're intelligent and they're from, let's say, 1880 or, or yeah. 1760, they're going to know that. Mm -hmm. So we ask the questions and we've been very successful with that. We use dowsing rods to field energy. I love they the work. idea of a dowsing rod. I love that idea. Yeah, it, it does yeah. field, and it does work. You, yeah. The World Dowsing Association doesn't even know how it works, but it does work. <laughs> Where's the farthest you've gone, Tom? Where, and where will you go? Uh, the farthest we've gone, um, we've gone up to almost Canada. Wow. And we <laughs> were in New Orleans. This Halloween we spent in New Orleans, yeah, Where, for our anniversary. What, what were you, we, I wonder if you were investigating the house that Nick and Katrina went to. The, there was a, the guy shot his girlfriend, or he killed her somehow, dismembered her and found parts of it in this oven. Oh, wow. Oh. Um, <laughs> in, in New Orleans? Yeah. 
Um, we, we mostly stayed in the French Quarter. I think I know what you're talking about, oh. uh, but we didn't go there. It, it was, the week blew by so fast because yeah. we were there for Halloween even, and that was like insane. And then we visited certain places, you know, and did other things. Um, but it, the week went by so fast, we didn't get to see everything. What's your favorite of all the places you've been, do you have a fav one favorite? Yeah, the Ramtail Factory. Right in Blackstone. R right, actually in Foster, Rhode Island. In Foster, Rhode Island. That's not yeah. far from here. No, actually, it, it the town of Foster abuts the Blackstone Valley mm -hmm. area anyway, because Glossier is part of Blackstone, and Foster is just the town right next door. So. And that's not far. Actually, it's near Uxbridge, right? Am I right? Or. Um, actually, it's near Killingly, more near Killingly. Uxbridge would be uh, Boroughville. One socket, mm -hmm. North Smithfield, that area is um, more near Uxbridge. Uh, that is, in fact, uh, that's part of the Blackstone Valley also. Mm -hmm. And those are great places too. But oh, the yeah. thing with Rhode Island is if you're in Woonsocket and you want to get to Forster, it's 15 minutes it's away, 20 minutes away, you know. Well, T Tom, and, and again, the article that I read in the um, Blackstone Valley Express. So you bought a haunted house. Now that was part two. Is part three coming? <laughs> I was thinking of it. I was thinking of it. Keep going. We were thinking of writing a whole book on that. Actually, Why not? You're living together. it every day. Yeah, because we have EVPs. We have photographs. We got things that have. We have actually uh, friends who are on ghost hunters and paranormal shows like that. Yep. And they came and they've investigated with us, and things have happened while they were there. They've been there. They've been more than. Oh yeah, they've been more than like stunned by what's happened there. Mm -hmm. And we didn't want to go on television though because. Yeah. Um, what happens is okay, you know, we have a nice, beautiful front lawn with these little garden things and yeah. stuff like that. And the next thing you know, our, you know, garden trolls or whatever you have will yeah. start disappearing because someone wants to take a souvenir from the haunted house on TV. Or the or the TV happened. crews are, are trampling your flowers. Mm, yeah, to get pictures and stuff. Yeah. yeah. When you're when you're in your house and all those rooms. So when you first moved in, you were creeped out. You were like thrilled. Yeah. Do you remember your first experience when you moved in there? Yeah, it happened while we were moving in. While you were bringing stuff in? Yeah, and at four, about 4.30 in the afternoon, it was just getting dark. It was uh, November, the end of November, and um, that was when those lights went on. Yeah. And then I s mentioned something about the uh, thermostat. I'm like, yeah, we're going to, you know, th something about that. And the next thing you know, it kept shutting down completely but mm -hmm. we never touched it you yeah. know it's a it's a regular old the old-fashioned ones where you push the slide yeah and we walk over there and it'd be completely off and I'm like oh come on and I put it back and it went off and it went off whatever we began to pay attention to was the energy or en whatever the spirits of ghosts there would focus on that as trying as a means of communication with us that's you know it fascinates me if you go to the graveyard let's say you visit your relatives and they Memorial Day want to put flowers there I'll always wonder if they Are there come there, several? if they know you're there. I don't know. See, I, that's the thing I always wonder too because uh, the you know graveyards are haunted, but the the body is buried there, not necessarily the spirit. No, if the spirit, spirit died in like the house, it may stay there, you know. And so, who knows? Maybe they're around you in another way. Yeah, well, I know. Yeah, DNA I know. sense. I've ma mentioned it here before. But in the home where we live, one day I was in the kitchen. I don't know why I was doing this, the dishes or something. All of a sudden, I smelled none, neither of us smoke. Bokum Riff or Captain Black tobacco, pipe tobacco. That my father and his father smoked awesome. pipes. And I thought, I took it like, I think I probably turned around and said, hey, Dad. Uh, I don't know. I just yeah. it, where else is it going to come from? Because nobody smokes in the house. We didn't even have any incense that even remarkably comes close to that. Right. Yeah. Pipe pipe tobacco is. Is that something that that can be? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And the sense of smell cannot be fooled. So if you oh. smell it, it oh, yeah. can happen. You can fool the eyes. You can fool the touch. You can fool taste. You can fool your ears. But you cannot fool the sense of smell. No. And I know that I went to you know when you go to a fair, there might be a, a tarot reader or somebody, mm. and twice. I went, nobody knew me. I sat down and she said, Who's Nellie? Nellie is my great grandmother and I have her middle name. Ah. And then I went again to somebody else, nowhere's near there, and again, Who's Nellie? Wow. This is freaky. <laughs> I mean, and that's not a common name. No, it's not. It's not like. That know, must mean she is really or strong or something watching. Our, I don't know. That it could came be through. It. it came through very clearly to yeah. this person. I, don't, I didn't know where it was, but. 
So you use your tarot when you go in. Yeah. And so if, if somebody said, we'd like you to come into our home, how long does it take to get you scheduled? Oh, it depends. If, uh, they, like if they're available or we're available this Saturday, we say, we'll, we'll come in this Saturday and you know check things out for you. Or it could be like, well, we're going away here, this, that, and the other thing. They will say, okay, we got three weeks. So we do it as soon as we can. Is it? Do you need the people to be out of the house? Or no, no, we love because it, whatever is happening, and they could be a part of a catalyst of it. We want everything to be the way it is, as if you know, except we're just visiting. Except you're just visiting. Yeah. Ever been in a place where you thought, you know what? We walked in, and I'm not comfortable here. Oh yeah, we've been in many places how do you like tell that. How do you tell people like, I don't think I want to stay. Oh, we stay anyway, but stay we anyway, just tell them yeah. this is very like you, you know. It's, it's got yeah, it's intense. It's got some a very negative or or just not friendly atmosphere going on here. Is that what you're feeling, you know? And and we'll let them tell us everything that they are experiencing. Feeling, yeah. I, I really don't, we don't usually say a word because if I say, well, did you have a green hat? All of a sudden you see a green hat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, you you don't we don't lead them on. So I want to know what exactly what they are. I won't be. In the meantime, we tell them, okay, we'll be here like Saturday, this certain day. In the meantime, get your phone, get a recorder. If something happens, try and record it, yeah. try and communicate, you know, and uh, just jot down exactly if something happens, what you experience, what happens, so yeah. we have a better run with it. And then we'll look into the history of the place as well, see if something matches a personality or, you know, historically. Do you don't want any information up front? Like, you don't want to know if there was a murder there. You want to figure this out on your own. Oh, we would like to know that, definitely, yeah. yeah. We do want to know all that. That helps in the research. Mm -hmm. But um, we're not going to, like, lead them on and say, okay, this person, you know, if I saw a portrait of the guy in a, in a history book, yeah. I'm not going to say, well, the guy looked like this, this, and this, right? Because all of a sudden you're going to say, yeah. yeah. No. You know, this guy could have black hair and a beard, and the other the person you saw, blonde hair, and you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. clean shaven. But now all of a sudden I said that, and you're going to, mm -hmm. that's what pops into your mind, and you're not so. Do you find men come in, win, women, children? Is it all the same? Who's stronger when they come through? Do you find anybody? No, it's just, it could be, have to do with the place itself, the energy. The you know energy pocket within that place, it, that's all. It's the it's the area that's strong. But if your loved loved one part passes away in a nursing home, and you were saying, well, obviously their their body is at the grave, but their spirit leaves. Would I have to go all the way back to the nursing home to try and, in that same room? I don't. She wasn't there. I don't know. Not necessarily, because energy I, energy tr can travel. Obviously, look at wind. Yeah. You know storms. <clears throat> um, th that's this is the other thing that we're at is that although we know a ton. We really know nothing right, yeah. <laughs> until we can go to the other side again and hang out with you know Jim Morrison and Elvis and you know yeah, find out what's going Jim on Morrison, and maybe. you know go with them. John and come Lennon, back, John Lennon, yep, and come back and you know then say, oh, this is exactly what happens. We're still only pulling it from this end of the veil. What we can possibly what's your gather. sense of what happens? I mean, a lot of us are like, would really like to know. I really would. Well, when we are energy and we're not electrical in nature, and when the body dies. It's like kind of like maybe, a, like I always put it, as a toaster, right? Yeah. You plug the toaster and it doesn't work anymore. Electricity is still getting to this. Electricity is still there. Yeah. It's just that body does not have any way to use it anymore. Mm. So, so it's flowing, so they can but it's not, you know, it's not working the way that it was designed to. So you can go to a relative's grave site. And maybe they'll show up, maybe they won't. Right. Maybe they won't. Tom, how get how could people get a hold of you? They can get in touch by going to tomdagostino.com. That's T O M D A G O S T I N O or email ramtail1822 at gmail.com. We've been talking with Tom D'Agostino and he is a paranormal researcher, investigator and an author with a book coming up in September. And he's been on the Dan Ray WBZ. He, I've heard him there the other night. I was shocked. Yeah. <laughs> I was delighted shocked, but shocked because I th that's the last thing I thought I would hear on one of his shows. Yeah, and it was <laughs> great. I had no idea he was a believer. Yeah, he yeah, he's had a lot of experiences. He's a pet lover too, and he, yeah, he's a really. But nice why do he's a pet lover? Yeah, he yeah. goes on uh, Charlie Ray, and he'll be nice. He'll say. He believes that the spirit of his dog, I think, is still with him. Well, he brings out a bowl of water every night to the back door for him, because yeah. that's what he used to do when he was alive, yeah. Oh. Where do you, now, what other places have you appeared around here on the, on, on the air? 
anywhere else? Um, <clears throat> been on several radio shows, uh, different TV shows, you know, The Haunted, A Haunting, um, um, what's the one, the Discovery Channel, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, worked with a few others like that. Mm -hmm. uh, did some documentaries, WGBY, and uh, Rhode Island Public, you know, stations there. We were talking about earlier about uh, like uh, the Travel Channel and Travel Channel, yep. Destination yep. America. That's right, yes. That yeah, travel too. and mm. yeah, I've narrowed it down. It seems to be like there's been a come a tsunami of the of the ghost hunter type shows. Right. They're more I gotta say it. I mean come on. They're, they're more drama and entertainment. So oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean <laughs> Tom's a real deal here. And when I watch Paranormal Lockdown with Nick Groff and Katrina, I cannot think of her name. They're just two people, and they're not going in there like, ah, oh no, and oh, dude, that's that on that other one, Ghost Hunters, yeah. dude, and then, oh, stop, I'm feeling so horrible right now. And then he curls up in a bun, and I'm like, oh, st I feel like saying, oh, you must think the same thing, like, please stop. Well, we don't actually watch them. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Do they think that. Well, we don't have, well, number one, I don't have time some, a lot of times yeah. doing all the, everything else. And two, yeah, you've seen like four or five of them, and unless it's a place that we've been to, or or that we are really interested in, yeah. I'll watch it just to see, you know, what yeah. the outlook is and they, what they. A paranormal lockdown. I, actually, Katrina slept in a morgue draw slab. Oh boy, that's pretty brave. Well, I don't. <laughs> I'm not afraid of. I have no afraid of of spirits whatsoever. It's just the feeling, the physical feeling of being in this thing that, and now my imagination's going like. How many people were in this slab? It's, a, it's yeah, the draw. She yeah. slept in it. No, it could not be I, I would draw a line there. I'm just kind of. He would sleep in the uh, one of the places they went. They had the body shoot. I can't think. Oh of, yeah, he for slept the tuberculosis at the, things. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he slept down there in the body shoot, and that's go. pretty. That's pretty interesting. It is. It is. I mean, but sleeping there, I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm holding all night vigil, sitting up. But <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up. But you know, uh, be looking for Tom's. Uh, Say Tales from Beyond and the Blackstone Valley Express comes out every month, I think the, the last of the month, and it's free. You can pick that up all kinds of places around here. And uh, they even give them off at our post office. I know uh, that I get it. Oh, yeah, Pe the people get them all over the lot over there. And this was part two about, so you bought a haunted house, and they, the funniest thing is they're sitting there with uh, closing the deal on the big old Victorian they bought, and they're there with the rest of the crew to, to sign the deal and everything, and somebody says, who was it said? Oh, by the way, it's haunted. Oh, no, you asked. Who yeah, Arlene actually asked Arlene if this asked, place was haunted. And there was yes. silence in the room. Who said yes, or did you just pick it the up? The owner at the time, he just put his head down and <laughs> said, there have been stories. And <laughs> you went, yes. Yeah, Where we other people might have gone, yeah. oh, deal's over. Yeah, and everyone just stared at us for a good half a minute, like... <laughs> <laughs> I think it's great. I'm not... There are people who are very afraid. And there are yeah. people like myself and you and Arlene. I don't have any fear of it's it. It's only energy. They're, they're not yeah. if they're there. They're doing what they used to do. If they're intelligent, if it's residual, it's not really haunting. Right. It's just the earth we play in a moment. If they're trying to communicate, um, you got to figure. It probably is more positive because there are more positive people in the yeah, world than negative. Definitely. And you know, and one of the people of this who owned our house was a man named Phineas G. Wright, who actually uh, was the wealthiest man in Putnam, mm -hmm. and he sat in Worcester to have his gravestone made. They carved his face in it, and every big bust of him actually in it, oh. and then he had it put beside his grave. Was it Hope Cemetery? No, actually, it's in Grove Street, right near the house, Okay. and uh, he had the grave brick lined, and then he filled it with alcohol, so when he died... He'd have his booze. Well, whoever buried him could have it. <laughs> Are you serious? Yep, yeah, that was him. That is me. Thank you, Tom, for being on the show, oh, and we're going to get him on again when he has his next book out. Mm -hmm. We'll see you next time. I'd be my guest.